Oh, it's not much fun that, I tell you. Oh, we're going to talk about macro close-up rings. No, we're not. We're going to talk about close-up lenses. So, oh dear. Oh, the one thing not to forget is that what we're photographing, what I've just come down, is one millimetre less. It's 0.8 of a millimetre wide. So you see how close we can get into it. Oh, let's get on. Well, that was a hairy experience. Now, I'm sorry about the special effects. I'm still learning. <laughs> but anyway, at least I tried. Now, let's have a look at close-up lenses. The Raynox, and we're going to use a Raynox 250 or 250. I presume that's 2.5 diopter. Um, this is how it's presented. It's very, very simple. It's just a magnifying glass, but it's a very good magnifying glass. How's it held onto the camera? Very simply as well. We just press those and you'll see some things going in and out there, I hope you see. And they just clip on, onto a lens. So they'll clip onto virtually any lens. If you've got a lens that's too big and this won't fit, then by putting reduction rings or increasing rings on the lens, you can convert. Now this, this is the whole set of converts sort of anything to anything, any millimetres to any millimetres, those are very good and very useful for the close-up lens. Now the reaction from uh, my last volume 2 was that um, a lot of people are getting confused between inches and millimetres. The ruler when I'm close up looks like it might be inches. It in fact is centimetres and in bo on both rulers the little lines are one millimetre apart. Here's a result of the 250 Raynox. It's already looking good. Now we can move on and see it at 100% as I did before on, on volume 2. That looks even better. And let's go on to the sharpened version and that is even better. So I think we're really getting somewhere. As I have a 250 and also a 150, I was wondering whether you can pile one on top of the other. So I thought I'd try it, and this is the result. Well, we're well into macro with that, aren't we? Um, that's looking very good. Now, I don't know if it looks as good on the computer screen, but, or the television screen, but it certainly is good. What about if we go up to 100%, and there you can see it. Now, that's totally unsharpened. So, Let's try a sharpened version. Wow. Very good. Well, I think that was amazing. I think that was very, very good. But what about if we put them on a telephoto lens? Let's put them on a 200mm and we'll see how close that can get us. Well, let's have a look. We've got the... 80 to 200 on the camera. We'll have a little look. Got the 250 mounted on it. Now, what's surprising is that we don't get any cut off. Um, I should think we're about the limit to get vignette, but even with this lens, you don't get very much. You can see it put there. What else can we see? Oh, I forgot to tell you, of course, my patent uh, up and down rings under the lens to hold it nice and steady and the backwards forwards just to be able to focus makes it a lot easier. One thing to bear in mind about my little uh, rack that uh, winds forward, make sure you get a good quality one. This one was 14 euro on eBay and it moves around. It's not very good at all, but I only bought it for the film. Now, if you look at the first one, that's very good. What happens when we bring it up on the computer to uh, 100%? Well, this is it. Completely unsharpened. What about a bit more? Mm hmm. Yeah, well, I've got a little sharpen on that, but not a lot. But I think they're very good, these. I'm sure that all makes are similar. I don't, I'm not pushing Raynox at all. It just happens to be that I bought them. Well, 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And very soon, we'll have another one up, but it won't be my next video, number four. Won't be the next video. I'm going to do a girly one first. Right. Um, give us a couple of weeks, and number four will be up. Don't forget to subscribe and like and everything else, if you did like it, of course. Bye.